Today's magical video is sponsored by Fiverr. Fiverr is there to connect you with freelancers all around the world, giving you access to the skills and talent you need to build your brand. We're talking logo designers, voiceover artists, web developers, you name it. So make sure you hit that link down there in the description, which will take you to my personalized stores of some of my favorite Fiverr sellers. I always forget about thumbnails, so I'm just gonna start this off by getting a dope thumbnail. All right, so this is the Kinefinity Marvel LF word on the street is this is the red killer. Is that true? Is this completely gonna wipe red off the face of this earth? What if that was my whole review? I was just like, eh. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> now I've been testing this camera for the last couple weeks. I've filmed around here in LA with it and also took it to Hawaii and I'm still up in the air about it. There's things I like about it and also some things I don't. My very first opinion about this camera was like, whoa, it's it's very small. Definitely smaller than the red camera. Let, let me let me show you. You know what? Actually, it may not be a huge, huge difference. Did this red shrink on me? I swear it wasn't this small. See, one of the things I was gonna talk about is like, I love the size of the Marvel LF. I love how compact it is but it's yeah I guess it's not that different <laughs> now it is definitely smaller and lighter it has this extra back on here I imagine if you plop this off it'd be a lot smaller but I guess that's like most cinema cameras now they start off small and then the more you rig it out the bigger and more gigantic it becomes but the next thing I noticed is how awesome it is to have these different lens mounts now this is an EF mount this is a PL mount and I love that you can kind of just swap them out without any sort of tools so you just lock that in there like that and secure it down. Toolless, that's awesome. There's also a one with a electronic ND filter in here so you can dial in your ND. It's pretty cool actually. And same goes with the EF mount, right? You have your EF mount and then also the one with the ND filter. And there, now we're on an EF mount for my Canon glass. So piece of cake, I like that. But this is where I kind of ran into my first little complaint. The way you mount the EF lenses, I am not a fan of. Now to mount an EF lens onto a red, it's very similar to attaching it onto any other mirrorless camera or DSLR. You align the red dots, right? And then you turn it, it clicks in there and it's still a little bit loose. So there's a locking ring right here, which tightens that lens onto the camera body. It feels really good. And that's how the Aria Alexa Mini also does it. But this, you actually don't rotate. So you take that red dot and you line it up there and then you rotate this ring. Oh, and actually that time I got it in there pretty good. It sounds like a pretty good method too, right? But half the time I'm kind of struggling to get this lens to mount. Cause first of all, you got to get it to see in there perfectly. And then you can't rotate it, which it will in both directions. If I turn it out all, give it any pressure, it's going to kind of move. And I don't think that's really good for kind of these mounting contact points here. And sometimes when I'm rotating this ring, it turns the lens with it. See, like that's what it's doing right now. It kind of wants to turn the lens with it. So I feel like I'm kind of playing this weird little game where I'm trying to hold that lens there perfectly and rotating the lens without accidentally, oh, see there, the lens rotated again. So that's screwed up. I gotta hold that lens super steady and turn it and lock it in there. This is something that can be changed by just redesigning these mounts. It's not really an issue with the camera itself, but my user experience with this mount was kind of And now we are ready to shoot. Now, first impressions on image quality was Wow, it is sharp. It's no doubt it is a good, clean image coming out of there. Now, everyone keeps comparing this camera to a red camera. But I honestly don't think its main competitor is going to be red. I think its main competitor is going to be more like the new cameras that are being announced that's large format or full frame, like the Canon C500 Mark II or the Sony something something nine. All right, let me look this up. Aha, the FX9, which is a $10,998, $11,000 is what the Sony FX9 is going to cost. So I think the FX9 is really the camera that this is gonna have to compete with. Now they both have full frame 6K sensors. The Kinefinity does have an advantage of having kind of more frame rate options because the Sony is gonna give you 4K at 60 frames per second and HD at 120 frames per second. The Kinefinity is gonna have a little bit more punch. So at 6K HD, we're gonna get 58 frames per second. But if we crop off the top and bottom, go wide, we're gonna get 75 frames per second. As we crop into the smaller part of the sensor, like the Super 35 area, it looks like we could get you know, 4K at 100 
12 frames per second or again if we crop off the top and bottom we can get up to 150 frames per second really cropping the sensor here at super 16 but that will give us 290 frames per second in hd wide so that's less than full hd but still that's pretty cool now looking at the pricing for this Mavo lf we're looking at about twelve thousand bucks for the body and i think this is the pro pack because this does come with the kinebac w so it has these dual xlr ports oh we're looking at about 15 grand for this camera so it's it's not really a cheap camera it's honestly not too far from the c500 mark ii which is sixteen thousand dollars i mean this is why i have such mixed opinions about this camera it's a nice looking image out of a good powerful camera but kin infinity like i haven't really heard about them much looks like you're gonna have to order it off the website if you want it fifteen thousand dollars i mean the results you can get out of this camera no doubt impressive but putting it towards like a website where there's a bunch of type of like mo test footages mavo test footages dark knight you probably remove that s it's test footage right but well, well, that's why though because footage is plural right like you look at multiple footage so why isn't it footages English is a weird language, man. I feel like I'd be more inclined to buy this camera if either the price was lower or they had a little bit more of a reputation. I mean, they're just still such a young company, you know? Like no one really wants to pay for a reputation, you know? You don't wanna pay more money for something if it just does the same thing. It's like you have like $15,000 to go and buy yourself a car, right? You go, what car should I get? There's like the Toyota Corolla, Honda Civic, Ford Focus, you know, like all the name brand ones. But then another mystery mystery car appears and you've never heard of that name before but they promise you more power more fuel efficiency and the spec sheet is just better would you go for that car company i think some people do and some people go oh well i'm familiar with chevy car so i'm gonna stick to that for those types of people that are willing to take that risk you know i think this actually kind of makes sense because if you really want your dollar to stretch as far as possible like this has pretty impressive specs it's not like kinefinity has no reputation you know, they've built a couple cameras in the past and they've, for the most part, seem like they've been well received. But as I'm using this camera, it does feel like I am using an early version of a camera, one that hasn't gone through as many revisions and refinements. For example, they also gave me this larger monitor to test out. So awesome. I'm down with that. I plug it in, turn it on. And with a more established company that's been through many revisions, it just, it just works. Things just you plug it in, it turns on, it works. But with this camera it wasn't really working the response was the seven inch can only work at 60 frames per second you have to put the video output to 60 so then you have to go into your configurations and uh well i can't do that because i can't see the screen so i'm gonna switch back to the older monitor where i can see things clearly i'm gonna go into my configurations gotta switch that over to 60. see it works now and it's a good monitor the image coming out of this camera is good but you see that little finessing that it took to get this monitor to work because i wanted to take this monitor over to hawaii right and i was packing very late last minute and i was gonna pack this but i realized it wasn't working and i didn't have time to sit down and read the manual because I I was in such a rush. Now there are some unique things to this camera like this drive, right? If I throw that on here, pretty much any other camera, it automatically just reads the card and starts recording. But here it says need activate. And when I first turned on the camera, I saw that blinking. And I was like, I don't really know what that means. How come I can't record? Do I have to activate the camera? Do what? Apparently I have to activate this SSD and now it's activated. So now I can start recording. Most cameras kind of do that all automatically. Automatically. The display itself is pretty nice. You get all your different settings right there in front of you. But on something like a red, if you wanted to, let's say, change the ISO, you tap the screen and dial that in. But you can't really do that here. And honestly, it was a little bit frustrating trying to figure out this camera without a manual. As far as the buttons and the layout and what each button does, it's not super intuitive. So you kind of have to play with it a little bit and kind of learn what each button does. So I'm not sure how to play back a clip. Usually playing back a clip is pretty, oh, I found it, okay. Okay, see this? It's a tool. It's like kind of like a setup tool icon. That's how you play the clip. So I got it to work. There's a little bit of finessing with it to get it to work, but 
Once you learn it, I'm sure it's gonna be very straightforward. Now, one tip, if you do get this camera, most of my frustrations just came from not really understanding how to operate it. I kind of just thought I could because I've used so many cameras before and most of the cameras are pretty similar in how you operate them, but this just felt a little bit different. So if you just spend the time to read the manual before you start using it, you should be in much better shape. I do feel like if this was your camera and you really, really learned it, you can really get some awesome, awesome stuff out of it. Is it a red killer? Not yet, maybe one day. If you wanted a full frame cinema camera, you know, you had to either get the Arri Alexa LF or the Red Monstro Vista Vision, right? Both crazy expensive cameras. And it seemed like this was one of the first to hit the market where you have cinema quality on full frame for, you know, not, not $50,000. But now they do have some pretty intense competition from Sony and Canon as well. So I'll be curious to see how they proceed next. Oh, finally, the battery died on me. I haven't recharged this battery since Hawaii. I mean, it's a 120 watt hour battery, so it's not like a huge powerful battery, but this has powered this camera for very long. So this must be fairly low in consumption. So I love that. I feel very comfortable going out with, you know, just this one battery and plan on shooting quite a bit. What is that a slot for? It looks like a slot for some sort of media, like a solid state drive or something. I think I'm gonna have to look this up. That's for something called a dark tower wireless video pack, which is actually kind of cool because you know, usually for our cameras, we have to mount a Teradek wireless video transmitter to receive wireless video. But it looks like you just drop this one in and you don't have to worry about cables and all that mess. So that's actually kind of cool. Another thing I like about the camera is that it has three microphone methods. So it has a built-in microphone, probably, you know, just for reference, but at least you can sync it with audio a little bit easier if you're using that method. Or you could just plug it into a 3.5 millimeter jack or those dual phantom powered XLR ports. I was also very impressed with the low light capabilities at 3200. We filmed at the beach and that came out looking pretty decent, but it has a dual native ISO at 800 and also 5120. And at 5120, I only got one test shot with it and it looked pretty good. So having that high native ISO is pretty awesome. I would love to do more testing with just low light one day. But also one more complaint, and this is if you're using electronic EF lenses, as you dial the f-stop, there's a lag. Every time you turn it, it's a lag. You turn it and lag. Turn it, lag. Like on this camera, I could just ooh, ooh, adjust. I know exactly where I'm at. It's very responsive and right there. But on the Kinefinity, it's kind of like turn it and you might overshoot it, you might underdo it, and then you just kind of tune it. But it's just like it takes like seven seconds to find your exposure opposed to the two seconds it should take. Again, possibly that's something that they could fix in a firmware update, maybe. Who knows? But that's just my two cents on this camera. Definitely very powerful. The image, pretty awesome but it does generally feel like it's still rough around the edges. This thing kind of moves. I feel like if I were to press it too hard, it'll crack. <laughs> they did also tell me that they're working on getting their cameras onto the major retail stores like B&H. No official date on that just yet, but I'm gonna keep an eye out. I'm really curious to see what their next couple generations of cameras are gonna look like. Anyways, should we read a few comments? Notice how every time he says awesome, it's like awesome. What? Aw awesome is that is that do i say awesome weird I'm, apparently 58 people like that comment so i i guess billy jeff in response to my video that i shot on the area alexa mini lf in 4.5k he says i'm watching on 480p why do i even try it's so weird making youtube videos on like 6k 8k and, all, and then it's just like 480p <laughs> jelly or gelly says fake people attract other fake people you and peter mckinnon would make a great couple a couple of fake ass human beings you think peter and i would make a good couple next video why i switched from carry to airy <laughs> matt 222 says dancing women eats fire and is completely fine me eats food from the microwave and can't handle the heat i feel your pain oh wait i totally almost forgot this is a sponsored video so giveaway i wish i could give away the kinefinity camera but they won't even let me keep it you know what we've given away two of these mavic minis so far and you guys seem to really love these so why don't we do another one of these? Leave a comment down below within the first 12 hours of this video going live and you can have a chance to win one of these and do this. So good luck and thanks again to our sponsor Fiverr. So little message from them.
Fiverr is here to empower us and our brands by giving us easy access to a global community of freelancers to help you build your brand. Lots of talent on there to check out, including logo designers, copywriters, website developers, professional voiceover, storyboard artists, and more. You're probably pretty talented, but you can't do everything. You know, like I can't do voiceover. Imagine like a dramatic scene with my voice coming soon to a theater near you. No one would watch that movie. Don't forget to click that link in the description to see some of my top recommendations for top Fiverr sellers.